Well, brothers and sisters, we have today the first Sunday after Pascha, Antipascha, as it is understood, uh, and it's Thomas Sunday, the day where we remember Thomas and his doubt, and his doubt, and through that doubt, we have the exclamation of certainty, which the, the most certain exclamation, my Lord and my God, that is the most certain we ever get in the Gospels. You know, we really see that, that that investigation that Thomas gave leads to that courage, which is what we hear about not only in the Gospel, but also in the Epistle today, the courage of response of faith that is demanded of us. Think back to uh, the movies, maybe, you, uh, maybe you've seen it, maybe you've not, but uh, Back to the Future. Right, back to the Future. We know Marty McFly, the son of uh, sort of a wimpy father, right? Father's always being picked on by that bully or whatever, and he's always kind of wimpy. And so Marty, Marty McFly grows up trying to be, you know, macho. And his big sort of statement throughout the movies, you know, is, no one calls me chicken, right? He always has to sort of show that he is not afraid, you know? In the third one, where they go back in time, they don't use that expression, chicken. They, in the Old West, they use the, the expression yella, right? Are you yella? Uh, same sort of deal, though, right? Same sort of deal. It's about an immature uh, protection of this virtue, 
courage, the virtue of courage. And it leads him into all sorts of weird places because he's immature. But at the heart of it, he is interested in being courageous. He is interested in being brave. And we see that in the epistle today too, brothers and sisters, right? We know the, the uh, apostles uh, are contrasted very much between the gospel and the epistle. In the gospel, they are crouched behind locked doors for fear, for fear of being arrested and killed, the same way that Jesus is arrested and killed. And the next moment, you know, we see them in the epistle, in the, in the temple, fearlessly preaching the way of life, the way of life, preaching the resurrection of our Lord and what needs to happen for a Christian to live out this, this life. And they're doing it boldly. In fact, we see that there are many, as we read it, we, we read that there were many people that admired them from a distance, right? No one was brave enough to go and stand with them. But they admired them from a distance, and they would lay down the sick in order for them to heal them. But they didn't really want to, you know, they weren't quite comfortable being associated with them yet. And sure enough, you know, they're arrested, right? They're arrested, they are imprisoned, and an angel of the Lord lets them out and basically says, get back to it, right? Coffee breaks over. Get back to doing what it is that you were doing, preaching the risen Lord. What is it that makes them go from the cowering McFlies to these fearless evangelists? That is, brothers and sisters, the resurrection. The one pivotal event in the history of humanity and the cosmos which causes this courage to happen. It's the one most important event period ever. And so this event is what drives them to be courageous in proclaiming the good news. They're going to get arrested. Yeah, we know. They're going to get imprisoned. Yeah, we know. They're going to be uh, ridiculed, embarrassed, unpopular. Yep, yeah, we know. We're going to be martyred. We're going to be killed for the faith. Yep, yeah, we know. It doesn't stop them. It doesn't slow them down. Because, brothers and sisters, Christ is risen. There is no, there is no other way around. If the Lord is with us, who can possibly be against us? And so the answer that we have in faith today, the answer that we have to have, the response for what it is that the Lord has done for us is courage. We know, brothers and sisters, that the Lord has set us free for freedom. But we also know in the same breath that freedom isn't free. We just finished uh, remembering and celebrating Holy Week where we see what it cost the Lord to give us this freedom. What it cost the Lord personally to allow us to have this life this eternal life with him. Uh, and it, it, wasn't, it wasn't free. You know, it wasn't free at all. And our response isn't free either. We have to respond with courage with our whole lives. And this, this is the Christian walk, brothers and sisters. What is it that we are afraid of? Well, there are a number of things. At this time, you know, there's all these insecurities about, um, all these different insecurities about uh, the finances, about getting, about getting sick from this, this COVID bug. Uh, there are all sorts of uh, worries about social distancing. But I would say that there are two sort of main, uh, there are two sort of main uh, problems that we, that we come up to as Christians. Remember one, it's being associated with our Lord, right? There's a stigma attached to being a Christian in many ways today, you know. We're afraid to let it out into the workplace, into the public square, into, you know, the, uh, the soccer team, you know, whatever the case is, uh, the fact that you're a Christian. You know, there's a, there's a fear there of being associated with Jesus. Well, we see that in the, in the Acts of the Apostles, too. The people admire the apostles, but always from, you know, the safety of anonymity, always at arm's length. So, brothers and sisters, that's the first type of fear we must get over. We must not be afraid to associate ourselves with Jesus, the one who has associated himself with us unto his death and resurrection. 
There is no such thing for a Christian as being ashamed. We know that our Lord has said, if you are ashamed of me and my gospel, my Father will also be ashamed of you when, uh, when it is that time. And so we have, to, we have to break free of that, brothers and sisters. But the second type of fear is even deeper. And that second type of fear is to be afraid of being around and ministering to and being open to and being vulnerable to other people. This is the big one. It is easy to make Facebook friends. It is easy to comment on people's walls. It is easy to have this sort of superficial type of interaction with other people. But it is much more difficult, as Catherine Doherty says, to go without fear into the depths of men's hearts. To go without fear into the depths of the other people, other, other person's life. That takes real courage. And I think at a time where we are encouraged, sometimes legally encouraged, you know, with the force of law, but encouraged either way to stay away from one another because it's prudent at this time, we have to do our best even more to be a counterbalance on the other side, to truly enter into the life of the other, enter into the life of your, of your spouse, into their interests, into the interests of your children. You know, it, that, that sort of intimate relationship begins at home, but it can't end at home. We have to be willing to enter into the difficulties, the, the vulnerabilities, the, the darkness and the worry and anxiety of the people who are next to us, into the people's lives. We have to be willing to go there to go into the deep, as St. John Paul II has encouraged us, into this new evangelization. Because it requires a true commitment, and it requires that virtue which is so lacking, that courage in our modern day. And so, brothers and sisters, today we are faced with two types of apostles. The ones who are afraid behind the locked doors, and the ones who are fearlessly proclaiming that Christ is risen in the temple itself, being arrested, being imprisoned, and then right back at it. We have our choice to see these apostles and to admire them from a distance with anonymity, or we have the choice to join them and to bring to the Lord our whole lives and our whole actions and become those very apostles to the world the ones who have the words of life. Let us choose, brothers and sisters, to be the second types of apostles and truly, joyously remember and proclaim loudly and with courage that Christ is risen. Christ is risen! Indeed, he is risen. Christos vos kres! Christos vos kres! Christos anesti! Christos anesti! And the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.